satisfies my desires according to his word and all my needs he supplies my... hello again and yes we are still wearing our masks but thanks be to god we can wear our masks we are still alive and breathing and able to wear a mask where there are a lot of us who are not here anymore to be cautious enough to wear a mask. Some are still ill, some have gone on, but God has blessed us to see another day, to be with our loved ones, to enjoy the company of our friends and still wear a mask. Be cautious, be safe, be careful. Because this is a time, I think I even mentioned it on last month, this is a time where we have to give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise for one simple reason. He is in control. Nobody but him knows who's staying, who's going. It is up to him. And he is taking his soldiers, his children home, one by one, here, there, and everywhere. He's calling them in. Their time is up for the work that he has laid out for them. They did it, or maybe they didn't do it. But he says, I've given you a chance. And now I'm tired of giving you chances, so I'm calling you in. You're not doing the work, so I'm not going to fire you from the job. I'm just going to call you off of the field. I'm calling you off of that job. You will be here with me. Maybe you need to learn something else. I don't know. Maybe you need to hear some more teaching. I don't know. But while we are here, we intend to do all that we can according to his word. And that's all he requires of us. Just do his word. I was reading in Psalms, I'm going to take this off for just a minute. I was reading in Psalms where it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. And I think I told you before, the sanctuary is not a specific building that has a denomination's name on the front of it. That is not all of his sanctuary. His sanctuary is where we talk to him and listen to what he has to say to us. His sanctuary is where we give him the honor, the praise, the glory. It makes no difference whether it's in our cars, whether it's in a closet, whether it's uh, in our kitchen, in our bedroom, whether it's at our workplace, this is something we have to remember. And he's pretty much taught us that, which is why we're having so much virtual church. And now we're getting to the point where we don't have to have virtual services anymore but we can still remember we don't have to wait for that collection of people going through that door to be able to say, I served, I worshiped, I praised God for what he's done for me. I thanked him for what he's given me. I bless him for what he has blessed me with. 
No, we don't have to wait for that special time. We could do that anytime, any place. Why? Because it is his place, every place, his place. Wherever we seek him, speak with him, honor him, bless him, that is the place of sanctuary. He's not expecting us to be in one particular spot, waiting for one particular time. Our time is his time, any time. His time. Because he hears all the time. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't turn his back and say, look, I'm tired of hearing this. They don't want anything from me. I'm tired. I don't have to listen. I know what they ask it for. I don't have to hear them again. No, he's not like that. He waits to hear from us. And sometimes we don't even have to say it out loud. We are sincere and in our hearts we know what we want. We know to ask him, if it is your will, Father, give me the desires of my heart. Give me everything I need, all that will make my life complete and still edify you in the process. That's all he's asking for. That's all he requires of us. And we can do that. That's all he wants. Now, the rest of it says, praise him in the firmament of his power. And he's got all the power. He's the only one who has it all. He doesn't even have to be in person to have something happen. We can ask him, and before we can even finish saying everything, he's already helped us escape an accident or some tragedy already blessed us with what we need because we'll get the phone call saying, or the mail, the email, or the regular mail that tells us we have what we needed, whether it's insurance, whether it's money. He can provide all of that. All we need to do is just what his scripture says. Praise him. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. And we've got music all over the place. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. We've got those everywhere. The smaller organs, we call them keyboards, but that's what they are. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That's all he asked for. Our praise, our honor, our glory unto him, our acknowledgement that he is in charge. He's in control of everything. It's not about whether we've got a job, whether uh, they're recognizing us on the job, whether we're getting the extra money. No. He can take the little and make much 
out of it if we place it in his hands. If we honor him with all that we have, he can take that little bit and make it all that we need and what we desire. That's all he says. Thank him for it. I wrote songs that say, Lord, I thank you. I count my blessings one by one. I thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Why? Because I know nobody else could do it but him. He did it. I will extol him. I will exalt him. Why? Because he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the God of gods. Nobody above him. Nobody higher than he is. Nobody has more power than he has. Why? Because he is the God of everything. And as long as we remember that, acknowledge him, and give him honor and praise, we don't have anything to worry about. He will handle everything, whether it be a pandemic, a plague, whether it be an accident or a sickness, all we do is give it to him and he will handle it. All of this that we've gone through has nothing to do with him punishing us. He does want us to remember who he is and what he is about. But he does not punish us because we just got so lackadaisical and just so nonchalant that we didn't bring him into the focus of what we were about before the coronavirus came out. We had just gotten so into, I can do this, and I can do that, not even actually recognizing that we could not do anything if he did not wake us up, if he didn't give us thought, if he didn't give us sight, if he didn't give us speech, it wouldn't be anything we could just be a vegetable in the garden. And that's all the earth is. His garden where his children are. But if we don't produce, there's nothing that he would do to just say, I'm punishing you for not. He will stop you and have you remember, but he is not a God of punishment that will just go ahead and, oh, just cut you off if you don't do what he says do. No, because he loves, he forgives, He cherishes his children, and we are all his children. We have to remember he is our father. No matter what, he is our father. We just have to remember some of those things. We have to move out of ourselves 
and into his realm of understanding. We have to trust him and realize that it is not us. It is him that's working through us. We are instruments of his hands. If he doesn't want us to do something, he can always stop that action right away. Without a doubt, without any question, he will do that. But all the power is in his hands. We have the blessed assurance of knowing that he is our father and loves us. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. No more than what is necessary. It's nothing big. But to acknowledge and to know that he is. We can have that assurance that he is with us all the time. Even when we're not praising him, he's still there on our behalf. And once it's all done in our favor, take the time to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I mean, for something as simple as the food we're eating, because it could be contaminated. Instead, we say, Lord, I thank you for this food that I'm about to receive for the nourishment of my body. Bless it, O oh God, and take out all impurities that it may be well with me. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And then start to eat. And Lord, before you go to sleep at night, Lord, I lay me down to sleep. I pray my soul you keep. Because you could die in your sleep, but you don't want your uh, life to be taken away and put in the wrong person's hands. Because if Satan had his way, you wouldn't have any goodness and mercy coming to you. He would take it all. But because you dedicate your life to God, He will watch over you even while you're sleeping and not let any hurt or harm come to you. Because He said He would do it. He said he would do it. No good would he deny his children. No good would he deny them. I tell you, it is more than a notion to know you've got someone in your corner looking out for you all the time. It's not like uh, just knowing the mayor, common council person, the president of a company, the owner of a business. It's better than that because he's bigger than that. 
He has more power than that. Because you can go into a dealership and know almost everybody in it from the top all the way down and still not be able to get a car. Why? Because your credit score is what they go by. Not by who you know. Because if that was the case, if they believed and trusted like you, they would have everything you have. It's not about who you know. Mainly because God has everything and he's our inside track to everything that we need. Without him, we can do nothing. Without him, everything would be far away, never within our reach. But he allows us to have. He allows us to be. He allows us to accomplish even without having a college degree, we can actually go ahead and obtain a lot of stuff that people with college educations don't even have access to. Not because they don't want it, but because they don't know the same person we know and know how to access it. If you access it in prayer, you get it. But if you don't know who you're praying to and what they're about for you, you won't have it. There are some things that we just have to go through in life and he will help us go through them so that we can be on the sunnier side. Not because we deserve so much, but because he is so loving to us. He loves us. That's the one thing we have to remember. His love, His grace, His mercy. It's all about that. Not because we're so good, but because we belong to Him. We belong to Him. Be not afraid. Trust him. Trust in him. All that you need is in him. It's all in him. Don't ever forget it. He is the one. Not just anybody, he is the body. You have to know him. Nothing else is better than having him on your side, having him in your corner. He has all of the ways and the means to bless you. And that's all you can do is just say, Lord, I want to be whatever you want me to be. I want to do whatever you want me to do. 
so that I can have all that you said you would provide. That's all there is. Acknowledge him. He will do it. Now, I'm working on a new CD. Been working on it through this pandemic. So this won't be the only music you hear from me. My son is even helping me. It has nothing to do with who can put the instrumentation in. I have him in my corner. I know him. I live for him. Remember that. Trust Him, praise Him, honor Him, glorify Him, and you will have all that you need. All that you need, all that you desire, He will see to it that you get it. And by the time I am with you again next month, if he feels the need or feels like we should have, we'll have more of what we need, more of what we want. You'll know it because it will come to you without you having to do anything. But until that time, just remember, Praise ye the Lord. Everything that have breath, praise the Lord. All right? Hi everybody, I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network. Praise the Peace family, this is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. <laughs>